We're here in Imanza, Bali today with this beautiful landscape behind. We have our usual setup, we've got the Sony A7S III, a few vintage and Cine lenses, and we're talking about how to shoot video only using natural light. Now, for example, the scene that you just saw over there, it wasn't exposed that well. I had too much light on my side and the rest of my face was just very dark. While here, it's a bit better exposed because the light comes from, well, everywhere. But I have a bit of a side light and my face is just better lit in general. So today we're learning how to use light in the best way when we're shooting run and gun and we're just capturing things that they happen. We don't have any preparation, no light, just a camera, a lens and a mic. different light does when used correctly. Simple as that. What I did right now was moving the curtains a bit and closing the curtains over there. And this shaped the light coming from the window on my face so much better than it was before. It looks a lot less flat. And this is all we're gonna talk about today. Cinematic natural lighting techniques. All I did was very simple and you can do this anywhere, at your house or in the mountains of Bali, literally anywhere. All you gotta know is how to move and angle your camera right and how to use light in your favor. So usually I would have a bunch of like stuff in the background. I would have a light up here to light my face perfectly. Maybe a light here to give me a little bit of a, like a side light and you know, highlight my head a bit more, but not today. Today we're just using a window, simple as that. There are a few tips and tricks that you can use when shooting with natural lights and over the past seven to eight years that I shot pretty much 99% of my projects with natural light, I feel like I mastered a lot of this and this is why I decided to make this video. So the thing is, yes, light can pretty much take your production to a whole new level and implement so much more quality, but at the same time for the style that I like to shoot, it's pretty much all documentary style, which means that the last thing that I need, it's a proper light to keep the moment original and candid. The main thing I keep in mind, and this might get a little bit confusing, but trust me here, it's shadows. Don't look for light, but look for shadows. Light is always there. Light is coming from everywhere, unless it's obviously pitch black, but you're not gonna sh be shooting in pitch black, right? So don't look for light, look for shadows, because if you look for the right shadows, that means that you're looking for the right light that is gonna shape your shadows and make your image and your footage a lot more three-dimensional. So find a way to angle your camera in a very specific way so that whenever you press record, the light in the scene is shaping the shadow in a very dynamic and specific way, creating a beautiful three-dimensional image. Wherever your light is coming from, you wanna try and create a triangle between the light, the subject, and the camera. For example, I have a light behind me, but that is just, you know, I just want to add a bit more like artistic kind of vibe, but the light is coming from there right now. This is my open window that is right now. The camera is here and I'm right here. If I would be right here, you probably, I'm probably right now very weirdly shaped because this is a very kind of 14 millimeter fisheye lens. But if I'm standing right here, it's gonna look weird because the light is hitting only this side. This light is hitting this side. There's no shadow. I'm probably super, just, just everything is perfectly lit. It's not very, very nice. And if I move over here, maybe over here, I'm pretty much only getting light from here, which means this side is gonna be very dark and I don't think it's gonna look that good. But if I'm pretty much right here, here, this light should lit me pretty well on my face right now. So you can use any kind of light source to create this little triangle between the subject, the camera, and the light and create an interesting composition instead of just a very flat one. With that said, don't go crazy on things because if only, you know, the light comes from behind me and I'm shooting from here and yeah, this is backlit, but it's just not gonna look good obviously for like talking scenes. This can be taken to a whole new level if you're getting something artistic, but just keep it simple to start off and understand the basic and make a triangle between the camera, the subject, and 
the light. I repeated this on this channel so many times, but shooting shadow side, it is the most important thing in filmmaking and I still do that every single day. With that said, when shooting outside, it's a bit tricky because sometimes you're just shooting with the sun and it's kind of hard to place the subject, especially if you're documenting something or you're shooting anything outside that you don't really have a control over the subject. You know, the subject maybe is just right across from the sun, so you have to shoot it that way, especially if you wanna capture that specific subject. So what do I do? I shoot at sunrise and I shoot at sunset. Having a warm, glowy, low light, it's a lot better and it's a lot softer than having a midday sun. So I totally recommend going out and shooting early morning and late afternoon if you wanna shoot anything with a subject that you don't have control of. With that said, it doesn't mean that you can't shoot anything during the midday hours. So I thought midday is not really your best friend when coming to shooting, but sometimes, what do you do? Sometimes clients want to shoot at midday or specific things you want to shoot happen only during the daylight and you can't really plan ahead. So what do you do? Well, weather is mostly your friend. A cloudy day, it's a perfect softbox. A sunny day, just look for the shade. If it's raining, it's one of my favorite moods because it just adds so much more interesting depth into everything you're shooting and everything just looks more cinematic whenever it's just blue hour or just raining in general. So everything's more toned down. So the thing that I do the most, it's pretty much walk around and if there's anything I need to shoot and it's in the sun, make sure you backlit it so that the sun is bouncing off all around the subject, making the subject well lit or simply look for shade. Shade is your best friend and just make sure your background is not overexposed and you'll be good. The last thing I want to talk about is white balance. This is one of the most underrated thing I am guilty of every single time. I just forget to set my white balance to whatever the scene and the mood of the video has to be. A lot of the time it's very hard because maybe I'm shooting a sunrise so the weather moves very fast and then there's some clouds and then this and that. So for most of the time I set my white balance to 5500 which is daylight. But that's kind of wrong because sometimes I want a warmer tone or a cooler tone. So it's it's kind of a tricky situation, I have to say. So if you get in the habit of setting your white balance every single time, this is gonna help you so much more. And yes, you can always change it in, in post-production, but it's not gonna look the same as if you are just shot it that way. So if you're shooting around sunset or sunrise, make sure you wanna have a golden, beautiful glow, make sure you set your white balance higher rather than lower. And just try and remember that I am the worst there and I always, always forget. And with that said, that was the last tip that I want to tell you guys. So thank you so much for sticking around. Leave a like, subscribe and all the things and I'll see you guys in the next video next week. See ya.